Next generation laser weapons are coming. Lasers pose extraordinary speed as nothing can counter the speed of light. Lasers have stealth and precision along with low cost per shot and unlimited magazines. Stay till the end of the video because we're telling you how lasers contend with factors that degrade their beam quality. Shield, the self-protect high energy laser demonstrator, Shield currently exists as a ground-based demonstrator and the Air Force believed that Shield could be reduced to a small pod that could be tested on an F-15 fighter by 2021 and eventually integrated into F-16 and F-35 single-engine fighters. If airborne laser proves to be effective enough, then the laser weapons of the future could transform aerial warfare by enhancing the survivability of fighters, bombers, tankers, and anti-aircraft missiles. Lasers have an unlimited magazine and could serve as quick and precise air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons. SHIELD wants to put the defensive laser pod on fighter jets to defend them from incoming anti-aircraft missiles. Moreover, an offensive laser to shoot down enemy aircraft requires a strong impact at longer distances, which is not accomplished yet. Have you ever heard that SHIELD's new beam detector design would initially be used on IFPC HEL trucks? It will defend against artillery rockets, drones, and subsonic cruise missiles. The initial IFPC HEL prototypes are under development and will be operational by 2024. It is one year ahead of the timeline given by Lockheed to put the laser on a fighter. The fighter pod won't be an operational prototype and it would just validate the technology. The difference in the timeline suggests that it's easier to mount a working weapon on a truck than on a fighter jet. Additionally, the truck won't move at hundreds of miles an hour and the stability would make aiming easier. IFPC HEL will produce 300 kilowatts of power, whereas the shield's output is not yet decided but it'll be around 100 kilowatts and will allow the aircraft to change the laser without installing a new power generation system. No doubt that the power output is important, but precision counts equally. Extra power implies extra damage at longer ranges, but it's possible only if you hit the target in the first place. It is hard for the weapons in development, such as SHIELD and IFPC. They are intended to destroy fast-moving threats like rockets, missiles, and drones, that require the laser to hit the target long enough for the laser to heat it and destroy it, even if it's just a fraction of a second. The precision can trump power, certainly because the more precisely the laser beam stays on the same spot, the faster it burns through. The beam director targets and keeps the laser precisely on target and pulls in sensor data on current locations of both the target and the firing platform and the software looks out for the location of the beam to travel and adjusts specifically designed mirrors to bounce the laser light in the right direction. The beam director keeps on making those calculations and adjustments. Can an aircraft flying at hundreds of miles an hour achieve this kind of precision? Yes, Lockheed's been doing it for decades as it makes the Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod that is widely used on US and Allied aircraft since 2006. This sniper uses multiple sensors, including lasers, to pinpoint targets for precision-guided airstrikes. Lance and Chelsea The Air Force's SHIELD program consists of three components, including the Lance laser developed by Lockheed, the strafe control system devised by Northrop Grumman, and the laser pod research and development, LPRD, developed by Boeing. Lance uses fiber optic cables to merge beams of light to generate beams with tens of kilowatts of power, whereas conventional lasers use volatile chemicals. The modular design of Lance scales power by removing or adding modules as it transforms 40% of its energy into output. Lance is not capable of surviving at high altitudes and speeds and is being militarized to fit in a pod that can prevent thermal buildup from cooking the aircraft and managing the necessary electrical loads. Moreover, the F-35 Block 4 program includes upgraded engines to generate more electricity. In January 2019, the AFRL issued a notice for a six-month study called Compact High Energy Laser Subsystem Engineering Assessment, Chelsea, to test and identify exceptional technology options to scale laser power. 
the Air Force indicated plans to integrate enough power management capabilities to support weapons with over 100 kilowatts power for anti-air and surface targets. A third program was based on the development of a laser-armed stealth drone that would loiter over an enemy ballistic missile site to zap nuclear-tipped missiles during the boost phase. The United States was not planning for the integration of aerial lasers in the 2020s and 2030s. On the contrary, the Franco-German FCAS British Tempest stealth fighter programs and the Russian MiG-41 interceptor have explicitly claimed in their program materials that the conceptional aircraft will be built to support Directed Energy Weapons DEWS. The Japanese F-3 and Typhoon's engines would also include a turbo generator that creates and manages additional electricity similar to DEWs. The United States Navy has progressed a lot in Directed Energy Weapons and mounted powerful laser weapons on their warships. The American destroyer even received authorization to use its mounted laser if needed defensively. While on deployment in the Middle East, the Navy's directed energy pods are large and bulky contraptions and are a far cry from the sleek pod device the Air Force recently showcased during their recent wind tunnel testing. Lasers contend with several factors that reduce beam quality and strength. The factors that reduce laser intensity and range include dust, cloud cover, fog, and rain. Apart from the atmospheric conditions, directed energy weapons would contend against shockwaves generated by supersonic flight. These aerodynamic flow interferences produce exceptional distortions for the laser to overcome. Wind tunnel testing provides control of variables such as air speed and air pressure and gives information on how a directed energy weapon would react in a variety of simulated conditions. The air weapons in fighter jets would have drastic effects on aerial combats. What do you guys suggest? Be sure to watch our other video, Russian strategy relied on technology. Not looking good.